Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the SAS Showdown, Season 3, Episode 2. I'm Colin McCarthy and it's my uh, pleasure once again to be here with... Rose Layton. To talk about SAS, SAS Ops, SAS Operations, SAS Security, and generally have a showdown on things. Um, and in the last, what, six months... There has been a bit of a showdown in the industry. Yeah, who can who can lay um, off the most people, Colin? <laughs> yes, at at the best or the worst possible time, it is, you know, not a laughing matter Absolutely when not. people lose their lose their their, their jobs. Um, you know, there's various different terms for them. Uh, RIF reduction in force is one of the terms that uh, I've been seeing used. Um, and obviously, a lot of these people um, all over the place in different industries have experienced something just a couple of years ago in May of 2020. Um, yep, there was another, the pandemic, another we, wave of layoffs. As we all know. Yep, yep, you know, from a whole range of industries. Um, but these ones are very, maybe not unique, but they're interesting because there's some very, very big players and there's a you know a lot of articles in uh, Fortune, uh, CNBC, a lot of you know uh, Business Insider, LinkedIn, all talking about the the, the economics mm -hmm. and and the reason behind it. Well, you know, and, and I, six I think months on, it I is, just told you, six months on, we're seeing you know Forbes articles talking about the the mental health impact of going through this many yep. layoffs all in a row. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and it is, and obviously, a lot of these companies did have a lot of growth in the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Twenty twenty one, you know, with the advent of remote work, huge investments in technology from companies last year. Uh, a lot of companies, you know, uh, advancing their collaboration transition plans that they had. You know, deploying Zoom more people using Teams, um, you know, more people using Google services, people moving everything to the cloud, getting rid of their data centers, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and obviously that growth caused a lot of those companies to, to hire for the growth that they were seeing. And then, you know, when you get a slowdown, which has happened because of how the economy is, yeah. they have to make those, you know, really tough decisions. And there are some some things I think that we as SaaS ops professionals need to consider um, as consumers, customers of these products, um, and also operationally, you know, dealing with, you know, heaven forbid, touch wood, it doesn't have to happen, but dealing with uh, layoffs within the organizations, yeah. you know, the, the way it part absolutely could happen and, to us. Um, I wanted to ask you, just as we get started, Colin, have you ever been laid off? I have not. I have. I have not been laid off. I have. Yeah. I was laid off from a very large American telecommunications company. They eliminated my entire job title, which was over 10,000 people. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it was, that's it was very big. Reduction. And I will say like, in terms of like, I, I think like from my perspective, like I would not, I can't fathom having to lay off that many people at once. Like I worked briefly in a large organization, but I'm now back to a smaller organization and have been at smaller organizations. And like mm -hmm. our layoffs look more like 75 people at maximum. Like I can't Im imagine laying off 10,000 people at once, but I will say like, I thought they handled it pretty well. I mean, they, they brought us all in to the office at that point and like one by one like we're like hey can you come in a little bit early and our boss told us what was happening and um and then we went home and we were paid for an extra month or so and got our severance packages and moved on with our lives right, right? yeah yeah well, it's good that you were able to you know, if they gave you severance, obviously there's different packages in different parts of the world. 
the, the whole packages that people have been getting, certainly from some of these, uh, Saskat, um, certainly for some of these these larger companies is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I know, um, I think it's Google, Zoom, I remember specifically we're giving people like a 16 week salary, mm -hmm. still giving them the bonus, giving them healthcare to the end of the year. Obviously a lot of that is very important in, in the US. Yes. In Europe, there are other, uh, in my home country, the, the UK, obviously there are different employment laws. You don't have to worry about healthcare because you get it automatically um, from the, the state mm -hmm. system. So there's, you know, there's a lot, I, I wouldn't, you know, some, I think HR and, you know, is, is a, is a difficult part of business operations because you're dealing with, you know, that, that, that human aspect, obviously we just have to make sure that ones and zeros are all in the right order and, and talking. But to I each mean, other. I think we have um, heard some kind of I, what I consider horror stories through all of this, where there were people who like tried to log in <laughs> one day and like couldn't because they had already been locked out of all the systems. Um, yeah. Yeah. People who I think this was a Twitter, <laughs> to be fair. So it's a little bit of a dumpster fire, but um, they did a round of layoffs. I think early in Elon Musk's tenure that, um, like they incorrectly notified people that they were being laid off. <laughs> yeah, and then had to like yeah, uh, revert to that, um, walk that back a little bit. So like. And I'm, I'm sure that there's stories of that. Like, I'm also, you know, I'm not terribly impressed by companies that laid people off right before Christmas. That sucks. That really sucks. Mm. That's like the worst possible week yes. of the year to lay off your employees. Um, yes. Yeah. There's yeah. an organization that, that we know that let people go on like the 8th of December. Um, yeah. Well, and, and, uh, and we've been watching this through LinkedIn, through our LinkedIn feeds. Um, yeah. And but I think one way if you want to kind of really take in the scope of everything that's happened in the last six months or so, um, you can visit layoffs.fyi, which is um, one of the central places that tracks layoffs. It doesn't have all of them. Um, Colin and I went through and looked for some companies that we knew had done layoffs and not all of the data is there, but um, definitely the, all the larger ones are and um, all of the really well publicized ones. Um, I find that interesting too, because through LinkedIn, we can see layoffs that are happening because the former employees or current employees are acknowledging it, but the company itself never makes a statement. Right. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's, let's bring, bring up the uh, yeah. uh, layoffs.fyi briefly and, and have a look. So, uh, it, it is a very good yeah, site. Yeah, so it does let's draw attention to that number right at the very top, um, which says that in 2023, 359 tech companies have laid off employees, and the total of employees laid off has been 105,010. Um, and like we said, these numbers are imperfect. So like this is just the ones that they have data on. Um, and there are plenty yeah. of layoffs where like the number of employees impacted is not listed. Um but yeah, that's pretty pretty stark. And Colin, if you want to scroll down to that second chart, is that so, one? Uh, yeah, since, so this is since COVID. Yeah, layoffs. yeah, this one's since COVID, but it's also quarterly, so I think it shows the trend a little bit better. Um, a lot of SaaS companies that we know are off on the week between Christmas and New Year's, so like it kind of yep. changes the charts. But um, you can see, like, we were pretty stable in 2021, and then. Um, in 2022, things started to ramp up a little bit. Q2, Q3, 2022 saw some layoffs and then Q4 and Q1 are just like sort of out of proportion. Um, a lot of companies doing yeah. layoffs. And so C certainly before Christmas, it was a lot of companies laying off, you know, a large amount of people, but then it's, it's less companies laying off people, but more, of more people being yeah, laid off. Yeah, and I off. think so it, it's... all the Google, Microsoft just did their layoffs. Um, so, I was so going to say, yeah, scroll up the to biggest, the top of that if table I scroll, there. Yeah, they're the biggest layoffs that the, 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 they have records for. Yeah, um, so Meta is the Google only one who did better. a layoff, a big layoff prior to the new year. All of these other companies are, mm. 
except for booking.com. That was a COVID era one. Um, but yeah, but so, so Google, Microsoft, Amazon, another Amazon <laughs> Salesforce, they've all done um, really large layoffs since the beginning of the year, um, which I think contributes to that, that Q1 factor where it's fewer companies, but more people. Yeah. The, the other bit of information that I love on this side is the list of employees where there's a whole list of Google Docs uh, that, that list all of the employees, you know, from, for example, from Zoom, from Splunk, uh, Groupon, and it lists, you know, their name, location, work type that they're after. Yeah. Um, and, their link, and their LinkedIn profile. And from 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 what i've heard seen and heard anecdotally around the internet um in posts is people's belief that a lot of these people that, that have been laid off will quickly be able to find you know other work um and so, i mean we hope is, that for them you know, obviously um yeah the interesting thing is um you know the the reports i've been reading about the job market are saying that the job market isn't really any better or worse than it was before. Um, it's just this one sort of narrow piece of the job market that is emptying out. Um, I, at the beginning of the sort of like Q4 wave of layoffs, I saw like a think piece that was about how um, Silicon Valley companies have been talent hoarding. <laughs> And so like, oh, yeah. this is basically a flush of a lot of that talent back out into the market. And it actually will be to the benefit of all these other companies because, you know, these, these incredibly talented people who have worked really hard and built a lot of really excellent things will now be able to kind of translate those skills into other industries where they've been sort of locked out or priced out <laughs> by, you know, the Amazons, hey. the Googles of, um, that's the one thing that I didn't think of how many additional, you know, ingenious startups might get created, spun up, uh, finally launched maybe. because people, you know, have a VC funding is down too. So I don't really want to hinge on that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's the thing um, though, is it is a very, very industry tilted thing. So, you know, if you're looking at one particular slice of the industry, you're seeing really bad stuff. And if you're looking at other slices, you're not seeing quite the same. I remarked when, yeah. maybe I've remarked this on the show before, but like when I was doing my more recent um, job hunting, um, I quit my job from a company that did a round of these mass layoffs um, about two months after I left, which I thought was um, ironic. Um, but I, um, when I was doing my job hunting, I noticed that remote roles are not nearly as common as they used to be. Hybrid roles are super common. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody's advertising hybrid and then probably trying to uh, that's so tough. down when they when they get the candidate. That's so tough because the to the data is also showing that most people want to be remote, and so like I I think it's it's fascinating to me that there's such a large number of open job postings still out there. Um, however, it's like I think it's something like nineteen percent of them are remote, but over fifty percent of employees want to be remote. So over 50% of job seekers. So those remote jobs are going to be super tight for talent um, in terms of competitiveness. But then um, the the hybrid or fully on-site ones are are going to be less tight. So it's it's interesting to to see like how all of this recovers. But I do think it will recover. It's yeah. just um, were you around during the dot com? crash i i was i was i'd uh freshly started or newly started my it career um which which uh, got started in 1997 um yes. but i wasn't i was doing you know a lot of first line support in different places yeah. and, and wasn't really impacted but you know i remember the 
you know, hearing of these big companies that, you know, were worth millions, but had made no, no profit, you know, when they are bankrupt. Yeah. Um, Which we, we saw a little bit of like, that, like during COVID and prior to COVID, like we've heard of like the whole WeWork thing and Blue Apron and like, yeah. you know, these, these unicorns that basically had never been profitable. Um, yeah, yeah. That's why, <laughs> why foolishly in that's why foolishly in the late nineties when I had some some money, I never bought Amazon shares because you know all the reports were well, that you know it's not a profitable. Company. Oh, you regret that now, um, don't you? But if ever, yeah, well, yeah, because if I'd have invested like a thousand dollars in in nineteen ninety nine or two thousand, that would have been worth <laughs> you could have retired a huge right amount now. of money now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So. Um, but uh, anywho, uh, hindsight is uh, is a wonderful yeah. thing. Um, but so I obviously great site to look through. People can get a good aspect of what's happening in the, in the industry. Uh, some people are saying this is sort of companies level. R- r- I guess right sizing is another term. Mm-hmm. You know, level setting what their correct employee base should be now that you know the, the growth that they've had has sort of leveled off. It's interesting that. You know, some of the big companies, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, that we all use services from. We all use GCP or Azure or AWS in some way, either ourselves or the companies that we then buy services from as a SaaS company, as a, sorry, as a SaaS user, you know, are running their infrastructure mm-hmm. on those companies. So they might have lo- lost a huge amount of staff, but I have a lot of faith that there's not going to be any impact in their services. The question is for the smaller developing, you know, niche SaaS companies that, you know, we're utilizing for for our management, administration, security, yeah. you know, onboarding, offboarding, um, training, whatever. Mm-hmm. If they, you know, go through a same reduction, you know, should we should we be worried about their roadmap, their ability to to develop, you know, grow, uh, secure yeah. the platform? Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe platform. to say that like those those roadmaps will change, um, just like what happened during COVID. Um, at the beginning of COVID, um, there were a lot of companies that sort of altered their roadmaps to change, and then there were a lot of companies who also did layoffs. And because of that, like had to sort of reprioritize. So I think that's definitely something that will happen. I think something that's other also really common is getting a new account executive. <laughs> because yeah. they're restructuring their 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 customer success org or their, you know, accounts org. Um, and so like people will probably be responsible for a, a few more organizations than they used to be. Um or they'll, you know, they'll, they'll just draw the lines differently. And, and yeah, so I think that's a, probably another, another factor is, um, you know, getting used to new support channels, support agents, um, like getting used to dealing right. with new people in regards to your account. Um, that's, that's always a common, common feature. What other common features do you think we experience as consumers during a time like this? Um, it, you know, the, the, the roadmap is the bit that I worry about because often, yeah. you know, you have, you have feature ideas and, you know, a lot of companies, a lot of companies have different, different tools that they run to gauge, uh, you know, engagement from their customers or users to, for feature ideas. And you, you know, you vote up those ideas and you, you hope that they get added to a roadmap and you hope that there are, you know, product managers, developers assigned to them. But when, you know, you know that there's a lot of ideas or features that need to be added to a product, but then, you know, PMs and developers and engineering leads are, are let go and that those teams are a lot smaller. You, you have to worry, how can the how can the lights be kept on in that organization and then, yeah. you know, add the new features? And it's such, certainly in the SaaS security um, management market, there are there's such a, a growing number of, of different uh, vendors, um, you know, and I think we're getting to a, a critical point where a lot of the, a lot of them are coming, you know, feature rich and sort of, 
almost leveling the playing field. Mm-hmm. So and also um, redundant but in I even a number saw, of ways. Like there's a, a massive yeah. overlap between different types of tools, um, and each one sort of seems to have their own niche. But like this is the kind of time where we see consolidation too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it'd be interesting to see what mergers and acquisitions and buyouts happen yeah. with these layoffs because obviously these companies have done a reduction to save money maybe they're then looking to you know be to sell or somebody thinks oh they're they're cheaper now we'll Mm -hmm. you know make them an offer like i going down that list i did see that octo was on there but obviously before we have spoken about you know security fears and there's been some you know uh, vulnerability not vulnerabilities some there's been hacks and accounts being compromised. And then, you know, you see the companies that you trust on this list of reducing their, their employee base and their workforce. You have to worry, you know, wonder, you know, uh, yeah. who, you know, how does everything As get a done? As consumer, how dire does it have to be for you to say, I don't think I'm going to renew this contract. <laughs> I think we all have to question. Yeah. I think there needs to be no... I think it depends on how much you're be- relying on that roadmap, right? Like, if you're really expecting... Let's say a company doesn't have support for shared drives and your company is a company that uses shared drives, that's a pretty important roadmap feature for you, right? Is supporting, yeah. supporting shared yeah. drives. And so, like, that, for instance, would be a red flag... And then that compounded with any other red flags might be a reason for you to say, I don't think we're going to go yeah. this direction. I think we're going to go a different direction. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's the same for any of any of the apps that you're using, yeah. you know, um, uh, e- e-signature signing. You know, there's a number of different applications that, that can do that. Um, you know, you people can save money from switching to one for, from one to another. Yeah. I think trying to switch from one application to another to save money can be very difficult and very costly. Well, yeah, you uh, need to, if you're, need, if you're thinking about need, switching, you need to really consider like what the cost of switching is going to be. And if it's really worth yeah. the hassle of saving a little bit, because sometimes it can be a real yeah. pain and you've harped on that before. Cause like getting your data out of some of these SaaS companies can be really difficult. Or getting your yeah. data out I've only in done a it usable once. way can be really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I've only done it once in my life, and it was a long process. You had to think way in advance. I've only done it once. Uh, about doing How many it. Google migrations yeah. have you done? Oh, I'm not talking about Google migrations. I'm talking about like like going from, from one application to another. Um, <laughs> going from know. Google to Microsoft is not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no. That's, but like... <laughs> Choosing, going from, say, um, uh, a Lucid Spark to Miro or, yeah. you know, Asana, Asana even, to Even Trello, just switching password doing... managers sometimes can be a real hassle. Like, sometimes they don't really like yeah. to work together on formatting. And so you have to do a bunch of manual formatting yourself before you can do with the uploads. And it's such a pain in the butt. It's... Certainly, if there's no admin ways for for you to do it, and you have to like be reliant on end users, oh to, like, my gosh, yeah, individual user a, experts well, in a CSV wow. file and then import it into the it's next like one. Yeah, that's so. Um, I think the the last bit I wanted to talk about. So we've talked about the the, the scale and the scope of what's happened. Some of our. Uh, thoughts and fears of of consumers um where how about if we are the admins who have to you know run a batch process to say goodbye to 10 or you know ten thousand of our closest um, work colleagues i mean i think i think a lot of this is easier if you've already been doing the stuff that we've been talking about right if you're already working on automating your user life cycle management if that's already in a good place you're in a really um strong position when leadership comes to you and says this is what's going to happen um 
I think the the unique thing about layoffs is that each organization approaches it a little bit differently. It's not sort of an agreement between the the employee and HR. Um, it's not like a voluntary term at all. Um, and doing involuntary terms, I think we all, a lot of us make exception processes for those because they're, they're sort of unusual. Um, it's especially in smaller organizations are pretty unusual. Um, and so like, Mm -hmm. you know, like I recall, you know, we would hear from HR in the morning and they would say, Hey, so-and-so has an exit interview at this time and immediately following yep. that you need to cut off their access. And so we would just kind of, you know, stick a note in the calendar and do that. Um, but when you're talking about it at scale, you know, doing hundreds or thousands of those, uh, you've got some other stuff going on. And even, even yeah. like I, so I can imagine trying to do it like via app script, for example, Right. Like if I had a workflow that was entirely predicated on suspending users, I could build a workflow that would take a list of people who were supposed to be affected and it would iterate through each one of those names and do whatever it needed to do, move them into whatever status it needed to do, or move them into a group that would then move them into Mm -hmm. the status. Right. Um, That's going to take a while to process. Yep. It can take hours. Yep. Depending on how many names yep. are on yeah, there. Yeah, because it's going to go through, depending on how it runs, it will go through sequentially, make sure that, you know, all of the documents have transferred and then it will go on to the, the yeah. next task. And, and if you're using a documents. third-party provider, it, it would behoove you to ask about their volume, right? They To make sure that they're not, like, throttling you in any way and that you're not going to encounter a bunch of errors from... Trying also, to run if, a thousand if, instances of your workflow yeah. at once. <laughs> Certainly, if other companies that are also doing similar layoffs also use that tool, and everybody thinks, "Oh, Friday at six o'clock yeah. Eastern Standard Time." Yeah, you know, I. It's, it's definitely worth it people. to consider. Like, yeah, are you gonna are you gonna do your layoffs at the end of the day on Friday, or are you gonna do them on a Tuesday? Um, yeah, we yeah. have seen a lot of layoffs on the Tuesday, one, and I wonder if that's why. Yeah, I feel like I have seen a lot of layoffs on Tuesdays. Interesting. Yeah. I want to say I, Google I, I this was on a Tuesday or that. Wednesday. I haven't spotted that trend, <laughs> so um, I feel like I've got to look at look. I at was going to say, yeah, chart. we'll have to pull up the uh, chart and do like a calendar analysis and see. Um, yeah, um, the one the one thing that I have that I've been aware of having had to in twenty twenty had to do is some, some bulk. Um, uh, reduction in force actions on on, on user accounts is uh, obviously a lot of our automation is you know Bob leaves Jane is Bob's manager so when Bob leaves all their documents go to Jane the problem is is when Jane is also you know oh, yeah a like reduction if you're getting rid of a whole team or something yes so that you have to find out you know you have to work with your talent team your hr yeah. team and find out okay this team's going you know this team of 20 are going who who now should be overseeing and owning all of the documents that it's also possible that have. you spin up a service account to absorb ever all of it Right. Yeah. like yeah you know, yeah you can you, you can can't, yeah you yeah. can it just depends because I think a lot of times it depends on how much notice you have, right? Like if you have enough notice, you can work with talent to be like, Hey, like we need to figure out this sort of instance. Um, yeah, and, like yeah. go through the you list and figure that. it out. But if, if you yeah. have a couple of days, you may not have time. No, I think what I think the other thing you can do is just secure the accounts and then later do on the do the batch processing of, yeah. of moving the data when you know who's who's left over. Um, I personally don't like doing transfers to a service account because yeah. if people then try to access those documents, like who gets the notification, N- nobody or somebody does if they're monitoring that account. I prefer it to go to an actual human who can then say, oh, you know, this team keep asking for access to a document or commenting on a document that I now own. 
I'm going to find out who should actually be the owner of this document because, you know, ex-employee who is no longer here, who used yeah, to own yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, that's, a bit of, that's a bit of an operational No, no, I mean, uh, that's process, the thing. Is but... I just think there's a, there's a lot of ways to go about it, and it just depends on how much time you have um, and how, yeah. how flexible your systems are. I definitely, um, like, seen some, I guess, what I would call homegrown systems that are hand, hand, well, heavily manually coded. Yeah. Um, Cam. No, just um, APIs. Yeah. Just, just sheet, like sheet. yeah. It's amazing. Some, it's some, it's amazing what you can do in an app. Script. Yes, it is amazing oh. what you can do in app script. But I've also, yeah, I mean, I've seen some independent services, third part or like in like in house written third party services that um are doing offboarding and it would be a pain to alter those um, on the fly. And so without like, you know, a week at least of notice, like that's not going to happen. So it's just like, what can we, ch what, what are, what are the small things that we can change to fix this issue? So it just depends, depends on what you've got going on. Like if it's like, I could, I could do a better cloud onboarding work, offboarding workflow in like, yeah, an hour or less. I know. I know. So, so like if I needed to split I guess, <laughs> a bunch of workflows off, yeah. like we could do it. We could do it. Mm -hmm. But like if I had an ingrown yeah. system that like was very rigid um, and had needed a lot of institutional knowledge to, to alter it. Uh, yeah. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Certainly if that institutional knowledge that needs to alter it is, then is being on... off boarded. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's the yes, thing is yeah, like yeah. IT is in this weird bucket where we're like, we're both responsible for the thing and um, we are probably also impacted. I have not seen a single layoff that did not affect an IT team so far. Like no. yeah. whole yeah. portions to, of my work just that. blown up, which is really, really crazy and really disheartening, but it's IT teams tend to run lean so in a small enough IT team, you might not lose any people, but chances are if it's a layoff of at least 5%, you're going to lose at least one. Yes, because often the IT team is, uh, the, the, the head count of the IT team is built around uh, a number of end users that you're supporting. Right. So if you reduce the number of end from... users pretty significantly, yes, it but... only makes sense to then reduce a... the IT team. And that's a whole different discussion for another day oh, yeah. because that number can range anything from sixty to six hundred, depending on 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 the, the business, the what yeah. they're doing. We should have an episode are, about that actually. I think we should. Yep. Right sizing yep. your ITT. Yeah, so, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, all I right. think this has been. We had to talk about it. Colin and I felt weird we, about not talking about it. It's going on. It's affecting us. Yeah. It's affecting our peers. It's affecting our, the companies that we work with every day. So we felt like we needed yes. to dedicate and, an episode to it. Um, and the cadence of this, you know, our recording and this being released should be relatively oh, it'll still be going close on. to when to when some of these have have happened because this is what mid mid February. Yeah. There, you know. This reductions have happened at the beginning of uh, February, was it? And they Zoom are still happening. Go yeah, of, like Zoom was last week. People on the um, eight. Yeah. We've had a couple of those like smaller, smaller new little guys in the last week or so. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six companies recorded layoffs today, um, including some that I have worked with before. Uh, but yeah. It's not, it's not a pretty topic. It's not a happy topic. Um, it's something that I think as IT people, we have to consider how we will deal with it if it comes. And then we as consumers in the SaaS market need to consider what happens if any of our key business vendors mm -hmm. goes through a, a round of mass layoffs. Because... Like we said, it definitely, yeah. definitely makes a difference. Yeah. Definitely has a cause and effect. <laughs> it does. It does. Um, and we'll try something more exciting <laughs> for next time. Yes. We'll try not to be Debbie Downers so the entire season three. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, yeah, we'll do we'll do more on security incident report uh, incident response. <laughs> that uh, sounds equally bleak. ransomware viruses. <laughs> yes, season three is just the doom and gloom season, guys. Sorry, yes. sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's all bad news. Well. I hope everybody's enjoyed this. I always enjoy our conversations and our chats. I find them very informational. So thank you, thank Rose. Thank you. And I will go and get back to nursing my on-site flu. It's a flu I got at cool an on-site. <laughs> this is what you get for being a hermit for two years, Colin. <laughs> Produced by the Tab Geeks Network. Enjoy all of our shows on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash tabgeeks.